society and also to struggle against the idea that violence is a legitimate mean uh, for achieving political, uh, political goals. So uh, uh, how do societies deal with uh, legacies of past violence? Most societies, I would say, uh, would um, rather reject um, uh, such a past altogether and renounce any cultural awareness of something evil in their history. However, it is impossible to entirely reject it as survivors at least represent a living testimony, a living reminder of suffering that took place. Therefore, we can speak about the dialectic of rejection and confrontation, the dialectic that is manifested in countless ways, including deafness and blindness to what happened to events in which uh, most of the population participated in some ways. Uh, more uh, constructive instruments and institutions that have been established to support uh, peaceful coexistence and restoration of law are listed on the slide uh, with two most known approaches uh, to be uh, the retributive justice approach embodied by the uh, criminal tribunals and the uh, uh, restorative justice approach embodied by the Truth and Reconciliation uh, Commission. Commissions in a Bosnian context, um, uh, uh, the uh, the retributive justice model has been uh, applied. The task of uh, establishing uh, criminal responsibility and restoring justice was assigned to the International Criminal Tribunal for Former Yugoslavia, which came into existence through international will as represented by the UN Security Council. It can be traced back to several, um, it, it's established and can be traced back to several resolutions of the uh, Security Council, starting with the first one from July 1992, which it, in which it was clearly stated that persons who commit violations of humanitarian international law will be held individually responsible. But the resolution was not worth the paper on which it was written. The violence continued, therefore new resolutions have been passed, the ones which allowed for the creation of an impartial five-member commission of experts, which was led by Dr. Tadeusz Mazowiecki which was uh, uh, tasked with collecting evidence of uh, war crimes committed and uh, which also was uh, uh, performing uh, its own investigation. Uh, Mazowiecki submitted his report, uh, mid, um, uh, uh, interim report in February 1992, uh, publicly um, lobbying for the creation uh, of an Inberg-like tribunal uh, to try persons uh, suspected of having committed uh, atrocities. And it finally happened by the resolution 808, which provided for the creation of the ICT, uh, ICT uh, Y. Um, however, it would be uh, incorrect to, uh, to um, assume that the creation of this criminal tribunal um, um, was a kind of a victory of idealism in the sphere of international relations. Quite uh, the contrary, the decision to introduce the norm of justice through the creation of this tribunal uh, was actually a response to the failure of other approaches and initiatives conducted by the international community. It represented a sign of frustration and also discomfort on the part of international community, which was sharply challenged by its inability to successfully and meaningfully intervene in what has been labeled uh, Yugoslav, uh, Yugoslav um, wars. So what was the purpose? The purpose was to put an end to the crimes committed and to bring to justice persons who are responsible for them and therefore in that sense contribute to contribute to restoration uh, and maintenance of uh, peace. According to his statute, the ICTY was empowered to try four clusters of offenses, grave breaches of Geneva Conventions, crimes of genocide, crimes against humanity, and also violations of law and the customs of, uh, of um, um, war. In uh, what follows, I would like to discuss the functions which criminal justice system should fulfill to achieve the overall goal of successfully contributing to peace building, uh, peace building process starting with the first and uh, most important function, I would say, and that is 
the establishment of the individual responsibility. Uh, Theodor Meron, who was the first president of the ICTY, best articulated this uh, aim in stating that the great hope of the tribunal advocates was that individualization of guilt would help bring about peace and reconciliation. And the underlining uh, assumption derives from the criminal justice system, which acknowledged that if there is a crime, there also must be single individuals who committed it and who can't be um, who, uh, held accountable for it. So the primary function of the Hag Tribunal was, was to disclose the ways in which Yugoslav people have been manipulated by their leaders to commit such mass atrocities and uh, by uh, by prosecuting them. So the policy of the ICTY was to concentrate on the trials of those most um, responsible for uh, um, atrocities committed, but even in that aspect, it failed uh, for a long period of time because two most uh, wanted um, so suspects, Karadzic and Mladic, were, were at large for almost a, a decade. Um, uh, and uh, at the other um, at the other point, uh, um, uh, this raises another this raises another issue, and uh, it is related to the fact that, according to some estimation, there are around or between eight and twelve thousand war criminal uh, criminals from Bosnian contact con con uh, conflict. So the Hague Tribunal has prosecuted uh, around one hundred. Uh, 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 less number has been prosecuted by the National Criminal Court. So the question remains: What should happen to those thousands of other war criminals? For example, direct executioners. Uh, how we should deal with that. So it is clear that uh, massive atrocities which involve vast uh, numbers of uh, perpetrators do overwhelm the capacity of legal, uh, legal institutions. But on, on the other hand, what, what justice is being served um, by letting them um, off. So in this sense, the justice provided by the ICTY is only a symbolical one because a small number of the most responsible individuals stands for a larger group. But then the issue of individual and collective responsibility uh, becomes unclear. Uh, the question arises, where should the line be drawn between individual and collective, collective uh, responsibility? And that brings me to the second function of the ICT, ICTY. Uh, the main message of the tribunal's ruling was that the crimes can never be attributed to a people, be it uh, Serbs, Croats, or Bosniaks. Responsibility for crimes committed can only be attached to individual person. And this clearly implied that the massive violations of human rights committed in the name of a political uh, regimes and political ideologies and political projects that promoted ethnic, uh, ethnic purity, that pro promoted ethnic hatred, that promoted ethnic uh, violence uh, have to be considered as uh, the expressions of a primitive mentality that has to be overcome. And it was uh, somehow in line with the Western prejudice uh, against Balkan people who are considered to be like a primitive, brutal and backward, so they commit these uh, terrible acts of uh, violence because of, because of that. But if we acknowledge these crimes to be what they really uh, are, the systematic and rigorous implementation of political projects, uh, 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 then the justice to the victims can only be done if we officially um, uh, uh, repudiate the regimes that advocated and translated uh, these uh, ideas into, into, um, into practice. And in that context, the experience or the message from Nienberg uh, could have been very instructive because in, in uh, Nienberg, uh, the, the, um, the uh, 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 on a trial in Nienberg where neither German people uh, nor only a bunch of war criminals, but the uh, Nazi regime uh, itself, which was indicted through a selection of individuals who have enacted its mode uh, of, um, of um, uh, government. Uh, then uh, the third um, function or uh, among the major function of the criminal justice system uh, should have been the establishment of one accurate historical historical record which uh, would 
or could prevent any possible attempts to deny or to rewrite the conflict and the history of the conflict to suit the needs of uh, the political calculations or national aspirations. But even in that uh, aspect, uh, the work of the tribunal was also less uh, successful uh, because public disclosure of facts and findings not on, only did not contribute to the emergence of a common or shared truth, but the establishment of this basic legal truth is very often and actively denied or reinterpreted or diminished or absolutely omitted from the public, uh, public um, discourse. And then um, Another aspect of the tribunal's work relates to how it addressed the needs of the victims in that context being um, a primarily judicial, uh, judicial body tasked uh, with um, delivering justice uh, through individual punishment. Uh, in, and in that sense, more conviction oriented, uh, uh, focusing on perpetrators. Uh, then on, uh, on the victims, uh, of course, the powers of the tribunal were very, very modest and very limited. But I think that the opportunity to tell the story uh, represented uh, in a kind of first step toward this uh, catharsis. We know that uh, every uh, trauma healing process begins with storytelling, begins with uh, talking uh, about what uh, happened. And in that context, the ICTY represented a good uh, starting point, a good space or place to start this, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, process. Uh, it was tasked with punishment, but in order to uh, to uh, pass judgments, the tri tribunal must uh, provide uh, evidence, and the most compelling evidence actually comes from the direct survivors, from the victims, uh, and their and their uh, testimonies. Of course, uh, the limitation was that tribunal interviewed and dealt mostly with the victims who were indispensable for achieving uh, conviction. So the large number of victims never actually had the opportunity to, to tell the story and um, having in mind that the, what I have previously said, the great majority of war criminals still um, lives uh, and exercises more or less power in the communities in which they have committed those crimes. Uh, uh, it is uh, actually visible that this process is in a very early, early, uh, early uh, stage. And then we have the, the last uh, function, the last function of the criminal justice system relates to the deterrence uh, function. Um, uh, it, uh, in, that, in, 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 in uh, this context, it could be instructive, for example, to look at the work of uh, Payam Akhavan, who, who not only defined uh, this uh, function, but also um, uh, uh, highlights that uh, the terrorist operates at two levels. Firstly, it is directed at those who have already committed uh, crimes. And secondly, uh, it is directed at those who might commit them in the future, therefore distinguishing between specific and general deterrence. And uh, if you assess the role of the tribunal, uh, within the scope of specific deterrence, then it would be right to say that the tribunal completely failed to act as a deterrent. The existence of the tribunal uh, did not prevent it genocide in Srebrenica in July 1995 or uh, helped lifting the siege of Sarajevo, which costed uh, uh, more than 11,000 uh, human uh, human um, human. Um, human lives. Anella, Jim, 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 here you have five minutes. Okay, so and five even five. if we look from the, okay, even if we look from the perspective of general deterrence, which looked a bit more promising until Putin's uh, invasion of, uh, of Ukraine, now it is also very questionable if uh, this can be the case. And then uh, we can look at the way the work of the tribunal has been perceived by the 
people it uh, it uh, sells at the local level the work of the tribunal was very distant to bosnian citizens it was very mysterious and uh, subject of it of it was uh, the taboo so the main sources of the information was the political local political parties and the political elites in power and the media by providing insufficient or selective information or by presenting in a, uh, events in the way that benefits their interest people in power of of course, uh, mediated and shaped the understanding of the tribunal's work in a negative way and in a similar way in media uh, reporting was politically manipulated and ethnically uh, colored. Media reporting focused mainly on contentious events such as arrest and sentencing without providing any meaningful context to it or not, even on the basic uh, level by uh, explaining for which uh, um, the crimes you can be uh, prosecuted. Uh, therefore, all, already in early 2000s, it was uh, clear and visible that uh, uh, there are limits to the tribunal's uh, capacity to assist the peace building and reconciliation process and some initiatives. Uh, have arisen uh, particularly for um, the civil society sector to establish truth and reconciliation commission who would uh, cover some of the uh, uh, missing uh, points uh, in the tribunal's work. However, the, this initiative uh, had not uh, received the political approval which uh, was um, needed for uh, it to be enacted and uh, was actually never, never real realized. Uh, at the regional level, we have some initiatives that exist uh, in the context of uh, research and documentation. For example, the initiative that that you can see on the slide, which uh, is um, uh, 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 implemented by three research and documentation centers in Sarajevo, Zagreb, and, and uh, Belgrade. Um, in the context of social work education, uh, social work has played a very limited role uh, in this peace building uh, process. However, we can identify two major and in regional initiatives, peace building initiatives that you can see on the slide, the regional network of schools of social work, which was the first attempt in the post-war period to reconnect and, and uh, bring together the departments of social work on the, in this post-Yugoslav uh, post -Yugoslav Yugoslav um, area. And uh, in a Bosnian context, in a local context, uh, social work curriculum usually covers a different uh, aspect of social work with affected individuals, groups, and communities in dealing with the consequences of the war. Uh, with the aim to prepare students to mediate between the needs of particular service user groups and social resources available. But uh, um, there is a need or we have uh, understand that there is a need to uh, change the current educational paradigm and to introduce a small educational projects which would help us, uh, our students and our communities uh, uh, address the issues that are uh, either neglected or fully neglected or marginally present in our public discussion and in public uh, discourse. Um, the three most, so to say, famous initiatives here at the Department of Social Work in Sarajevo is the initiative War Veteran Stop for Peace, which involves um, academics and um, um, students and uh, former soldiers who uh, participate uh, in a joint project to discuss uh, the experience of war, they explore nonviolent ways of uh, uh, shaping uh, social realities and conflict transformation, the presence of absence, something similar we do with the families of a missing person with whom we discuss uh, exactly the issues I have talked about, the transitional justice uh, and uh, reconciliation conciliation prospects, and then the project I exist too, that is the workshop that includes uh, uh, students, academics, and uh, practitioners uh, um, together with the representatives of uh, association of children born out of war to discuss the issue of uh, uh, gender-based and sexual violence during during the war. So I'm sorry if I exceeded the time. I wanted to tell you so many things. 
Very Maybe good. too many for this. Uh, no, no. <laughs> Thank you very much, Sunel. A very interesting. And it's a topic that actually we all think about in the area of political conflict, how truth and reconciliation, distributive justice can work. It doesn't work very well in many places. But anyway, there's a, there's a chance for one question before we move on. And then I think really there'll be questions at the time at the very end. But we have one really interesting question from David Grimm. David, I'm hoping I'm capturing your question, but for Sonella, um, what do the concepts of shame and blame play in these processes? How might they, you know, are they impediments to the process or can you understand them in your experience? David, I hope I've captured your question. Um, yeah, it is. Uh, I answer right now. Yes, please. I somehow disappeared from the from the screen. Okay, so these concepts of shame and blame are very important in understanding how the issues are dealt, and it is important to look from and we can look at them from both perspectives, from the victims' perspectives and from the perpetrators' perspectives, and they influence, of course, the identity uh, of uh, of both, particularly in the context when victims and perpetrators have very often to live together in a post-conflict. Uh, post-conflict and transition uh, transition kind of uh, setting. For example, when we think about the context of con the, the concept of shame, it largely influences the way the victims perceive uh, themselves. So it often appears in the discussions with all these groups of, of, of which of whom I have talked about. And the blame, blame is often attributed to the other. So it is um, mostly recognized that the, 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 uh, every community actually understands itself as a victim, which is of course part of the problem. If you want to somehow solve it, then you have to develop another way of approaching this issue. But uh, the, the, the concept of blame is very important and it's still influenced to the greatest extent the way we perceive the situation of that time and how we act today. Thank you very much. Now, there was another question from Wai. Uh, should we, um, we, should we, we save it for the end? Yeah, we'll I think so. Yeah, thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much, Sanela. Okay. Thank you so much, Sanela. Um, it's my great joy and honour to introduce to you three presenters for our next presentation. That's Professor Vasilio Siokimides, who is Global Education Commissioner for the International Federation of Social Workers, who are our hosts, and my uh, very dear uh, co-editor of Brit British Journal of Social Work. Second, we have Gregory ne Neoclos from University of Nicosia and Busse Erzsebeck from C Cyprus International University. And their presentation focuses on educating for peace, overcoming the physical, ethnic, and political barriers in Cyprus. So over to you three. Great, thank you very, very much, uh, Ria. Just give me a second to upload, to share the uh, presentation. Of course. Right, now this is a whiteboard. Right, I think you can see it now. Yeah, we can see it. Thank you. Right, excellent. So I will... Um, um, I'll make a start by, by saying that in, in this presentation we will be discussing a, a process, a project, if you like, um, um, uh, or a, a movement uh, within social work, um, uh, something that we could call um, a grassroots reconciliation. Seeing the typology that Sanella uh, presented a few moments ago, she referred to the Retributive justice approaches mm, with tribunals um, on the main focus, the um, restorative justice approaches with the truth and reconciliation um, um, initiatives, but also the grassroots um, ad hoc on the ground reconciliations approaches that very often organically happen in, in conflict and post conflict. Uh, uh, concept. So what we'll be talking about today is, is one of those initiatives, an initiative, an informal initiative among social work uh, practitioners, researchers and students that happened in Cyprus over a number of years, initiated with informal meetings back in 2011. It took, it was crystallized into a, a platform uh, five years later. 
Um, how about before we start talking about the specifics, I would really like to, to focus on, on the importance of, of social work or the importance of discussing um, social policy in post-conflict uh, transitions. See, very often the discussion around transitions from conflict to peace focus on, on memory, rightly so, huh? on how do we remember the, the, uh, the conflicts and how we redress uh, some of the wrongdoings, but very rarely do we discuss uh, the concept of, or the question, um, what kind of a post-conflict society we want. That is, what kind of uh, financial and economic development should there should be, and what kind of policies we have in place to address in, in global inequalities. And as a result, what we have seen on a number of, of cases, including a Bosnia, and I'm sure that Sanella will mention, already mentioned before, to some extent Ireland, to some extent Cyprus, many post-conflict countries, is that excluding this discussion uh, creates what we can call fragile um, states, fragile uh, post-conflict uh, arrangement. And in the colo a a colonial lexicon, you will find the word, the word failed states, which is of course, is, a, is, a, is, is an offending and colonial term uh, for arrangements that they have been developed, ignoring the specifics and the social question in Marxist terms of each country. And we have seen in a number of countries, um, uh, a post-conflict and post-war increase in inequality and, and corruption. We have seen power vacuum in a number of countries where the constitutional arrangements, they're so unrealistic that they don't make transitions to peace easier. We have seen um, unempl high unemployment rates, privatization, suicide rates increase, or even uh, the persistence uh, of paramilitary sectarian ideologies. Um, and this is why in our approach, what we uh, like to, 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 to emphasize on and what we have been emphasizing on is, is the concept, is the idea that peace is not merely the absence of armed conflict, is, is much more, is discussing about the type of a society we want to co-imagine, uh, co-create uh, after the war. And, and in this process, social work and social policy is a, is a key dimension. For example, in Cyprus, we're very disappointed um, that as part of the technical committees, as they're being uh, called, the committees of academics, researchers, and social and, and civil society groups, there is no social policy technical committee, a committee that will be discussing the, uh, the, the welfare arrangements in the post war society, because we, um, we know that when the post-conflict welfare is not universal and it does not address social uh, inequality questions, the main danger is that the divisions along ethnic and class lines will be ex expanded. Just to give you an example, let's say for, for example, in Cyprus, fingers crossed, there is an arrangement, there is a settlement, there's peace. You know what, if we don't address the question what type of peace we want and, and if inequalities um, expand and increase, make no mistake, what will happen is again, one community blaming the other for the failures in economy mm -hmm. and, and all stereotypes will be reproduced. This is why we're pre uh, proposing uh, a universal welfare in these transitional periods um, that bridges the gaps, prevents um, alienation, bigotry, creates a sense of a shared identity you know, that goes beyond the nationalist constructions and stereotypes. And importantly, crucially, connect the national question, as we call it uh, in, in the Cypriot context, to the social questions. Not only how we create um, a settlement, an arrangement, a sustainable peace, but what kind of a society we want. And social work is crucial because it occupies that critical, this important space where state um, and international social policies interact with some of the most vulnerable people in, in our post-war societies. This is why um, we say that social work need to, needs to reclaim its role, needs to be more proactive and, and bring all these issues into fore. And, and our initiative was very much based on this 
and, and I will hand over to, to Gregory now uh, to discuss uh, about the specific initiative. Hello, everybody from the south part of uh, Cyprus. Uh, let me uh, clarify a couple of things. Uh, on your screen, you, you see the map, you see a map of Cyprus. Uh, on the top is the north part and uh, below is the south part. Uh, the south part is uh, governed by Greek Cypriots and the north part is governed by uh, Turkish Cypriots through the Turkish military. Um, and in the middle is the so-called green line, which separates uh, the two parts. The north part, apart from Turkey, is not recognized by uh, any, by the international community, which of course affects to a significant uh, level, uh, the people in the north. Now, some um, historical information about social work. Um, in 1948, um, there was um, a high uh, increase in uh, crime, especially in juvenile delinquency. So the colonial, the British colonial government uh, decided to informally introduce social work in order to tackle um, criminal uh, activities, uh, especially among uh, teenagers. Uh, a few years later, in 1952, uh, the Corolla government introduced officially the Welfare Department, which was responsible um, for the welfare of the Cypriot people, of course, under, allow me to say, primitive uh, conditions and uh, something that required the creativity of the first Cypriot social workers. During that uh, decade, Cypriot uh, social workers, uh, both uh, Greek Cypriots and Turkish Cypriots, worked together in order to address the various um, uh, social uh, issues on the island. In 1963, there, there, uh, there was a be the beginning of um, the conflict and the, the beginning of the so-called Cyprus problem, where the two communities uh, separated. So all uh, Turkish Cypriot social workers withdrew from uh, governmental uh, agencies. In 1974, there was a military invasion, uh, Turkish military invasion, following a military coup organized by the Greek uh, um, paramilitary organizations uh, and uh, they are Cypriot uh, partners of uh, EOCAM B. Um, and this uh, situation separated, created the, the situation you see on the map. Um, all the way until 2003, all uh, Cypriots were, um, Greek Cypriots were moved to the south, Turkish Cypriots moved, were moved to the north. So there was no connection, no, no communication, no collaboration at all between the two communities. Um, in uh, 2003, several checkpoints opened which allowed uh, us, Cypriots from both communities to travel across the, the Green Line and visit the other part of our country and see our, until then, enemy in real life. So since 2003, uh, we have many changes in um, the Cyprus society. Friendships, new friendships, uh, mixed marriages, um, professional collaborations. All 
um, from 2003 uh, until 2011, there was no movement in um, among social workers. I don't, I, probably for because of uh, ignorance, fear of the unknown, lack of uh, connections. Until 2011, where um, a first uh, contact was made um, by, uh, by our uh, friend and colleague uh, Vasilis, which allowed us to come um, to meet with each other. Um, so from 2011, it took us five more years to establish our bicommunal uh, group, bicommunal social work platform. From uh, 2016 until today, we, we have um, developed, organized many activities in order to, in an effort to bring social workers from both communities together. It's not an easy task. There is a lot of pain fear, ignorance among Cypriots, um, social workers included. So we take it step by step. We try to bring um, social work students together. This is also a difficult task because the social work education system in Cyprus, in both communities, was introduced not by Cypriots, but in the south by Greeks and in the north by Turkish. Based on the British, American and Turkish and Greek uh, social work educational systems. Um, many reasons, especially fear of um, the reactions, didn't allow us to introduce courses that would bring, uh, that would inform social work students about the others. Uh, informally, yes, we do this in our classes, but we do not have any formal uh, courses that will openly discuss the issue of uh, the political issue um, of Cyprus. So um, we tried and we keep trying through various activities, recreational activities, surveys, seminars, presentations, participations in conferences to spread the message that um, social workers in Cyprus can do the difference, can bring together a small piece of uh, our population, a small percentage of our population, but very significant, very important part of the, of the population. Um, so, so far we, we have managed to um, bring a significant number of social work students together. Um, and uh, what we keep, um, planning and discussing of further, uh, further ideas uh, for further activities in order to uh, strengthen this um, collaboration between the two communities. Um, we, uh, we aim to bring not only social work students together, but uh, also professionals. And allow me to say that a, a significant number of social workers in Cyprus, at least in the south part, are um, uh, they have nationalistic um, ideas, which are based on ignorance and fear and pain and the experience of the past. We do not forget what happened in the past, but we want to create a future for, like uh, Vasily said, uh, and a comment from uh, one of the participants, for, an, for a positive peace, to reunite Cyprus and bring all social, all Cypriots 
under one single identity, the Cyprus identity. It's not easy. Um, it's been more than 50 years now that we are dealing with the, the, this situation. But we do hope that uh, eventually our efforts and the efforts of various uh, activists uh, across Cyprus will, um, will bring this positive uh, peace. Uh, this photo represents one of these efforts. Uh, social work students with their um, instructors in one of our events in the old uh, city of Nicosia. Um, I can talk forever, but I will give, uh, I will pass uh, uh, to my colleague Busse for her uh, presentation. Thank you very much. And we have about five or eight minutes, so that's okay, Gregory and colleagues. For serious, please. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Um, it's a great honor for me to be here. First, I want to say this, and I appreciate for this good um, presentation and uh, organization. Uh, I will continue to share with you the progress and the results of one of our uh, studies by communal work with the two communities in Cyprus. It was a study involving social work students from both communities. And with this study, we actually aim to understand their perspectives and to understand what we should prioritize for a bicommunal study. Um, in addition, we aim to bring together social workers from two different communities to lay the foundations of bicommunal collaboration and to develop them. And lastly, to explore whether the current social work educational system promotes a mutual professional identity and bicommunal collaboration. Um, to achieve our goals, we conducted a two-stage research. First of all, with a survey of 51 students, we revealed their attitudes and thoughts about the current situation, serving a client from the other community and working with a professional. Afterwards, they had the opportunity to meet and discuss their thoughts and experiences by conducting a focus group work uh, with a total of 15 volunteers from among the participants of the research. Um, actually, the focus group was more meaningful than the quantitative part of this study because I'm working in a qualitative, uh, as a social worker, actually, let's say. Uh, qualitative um, researchers give the reasons and more deeply information according to me uh, as a result. That's why uh, this focus group was so meaningful uh, than the others for me. Um, and this group work that we did uh, took about two hours. And with this study, we saw that some students had the chance to meet and chat with someone from the other community for the first time in their lives. And I think this is one of the biggest gains that they make an effort to communicate despite the language barrier. And they still meet in their social lives even today, which has been like more than two years. And I still have the words of a Turkish Cypriot student there. She said that I realize now, I realize now that uh, I have more in common with my Cypriot friends, even though I speak a different language than my Turkish classmates with whom I speak the same language, because we are from Cyprus, from the same country and same culture. And what Vasily said actually at the beginning about the differentiation is exit while, while you are still keeping separately is totally uh, what reflects on the uh, students. And it was a great honor for me to hear that from my student because this platform we have influenced, with this platform, let's say, we have influenced the perspectives, at least 15 people who will pursue a profession based on human rights and sow the seeds of peace actually. And because of we have don't we don't have too much time, like Gregor, I want to keep it shortly. Lastly, I want to share the findings of our research with you. Um, from the results of the both quantitative and the focus group studies, we determined that the deficiencies and needs were in general, actually. Accordingly, it was noted that there is no supporting ground for bicommunal cooperation, both in the field practices and in the content of our training programs. And therefore, we concluded that courses that will support bicommunal social work uh, should be added to the curricula of universities. 
And we realized that the bicommunal studies were limited only by personal initiatives and interests. In this context, uh, we saw the importance of social work associations and academic programs taking more responsibility and developing policies and programs that support the students and professionals of two communities to work on a common ground. And another important finding was that the preservation of the Cypriot identity without any ethnic distinction was the common point. So as a result, it has been clearly seen that there is a need for a space for social work interventions um, to be discussed and shared on a common ground. Considering the findings of this study, I can say that the sudden opening of checkpoints has created an uncertainty by affecting the feelings and toads of both communities, and it has been understood that especially Greek-speaking Cypriot students do not have sufficient knowledge about the Cyprus problem, Turkish-speaking Cypriots, and Turkish-origin Turks living in Cyprus. Thus, the 80% of these students propose a solution that only perpetuates division uh, of conf and conflict between the two communities that share irredentist ideas. And on the other hand, after the division of the island in 1974, as Gregory mentioned, all international organizations and bicommunal agreements point uh, bicommunal by zonal federation in Cyprus. So in short, I try to convey our work and its results to you. Thank you for listening patiently. And I leave the last word to my dear colleague, Vasilis. I, I will not, uh, I know whether we've exceeded time. I will just say what we see in this photo, which is the final slide. Uh, and this is a space that we have taken our students. Uh, it's, it's, it's a great, great experience, powerful experiential lesson. This is the space where families of uh, missing persons are invited to collect uh, by within the UN buffer zones to collect the, the, the remains of the missing persons, of the loved ones they, um, that have, were lost during the war. And by remains, uh, I mean that sometimes it's a fraction of the bone. And what's symbolically powerful in this slide is that in this uh, very simple room, the Christian Orthodox icon is placed next to the Holy Quran. It doesn't matter if you're Christian, it doesn't matter if you're Muslim, uh, war impacts and creates suffering and trauma in the exact same way, and it is the 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 shared suffering that has informed lots of these grassroots reconciliation processes. Thank you all uh, so much. Thank you so much. Um, we have a range of comments. I hope you can see some of them in the chat as well as in the question and answer session. Um, shortly, um, yeah, we have a full view, and I hope that Sanal and Jim will be able to join as well. Um, so, one um, comment from um, the audience um, in the Rwandan highlight uh, in experience, international instruments were clearly abandoned as they were unworkable for locally and culturally instigated solutions. Do you think that those solutions such as the ones you present work better in the context such as Cyprus or would work better in Bosnia? If we start with Cyprus first. Um, sorry, I don't know, can you repeat if in Rwanda international instruments presumably is a international uh, law? Um, is yeah. We're talking yeah. about international courts, I assume. International courts. Yeah. Um, well, in, in, in some respects, you know, as I said before, in Cyprus, these instruments never really, apart from um, a security line, uh, a buffer zone, um, these discussions, <clears throat> you know, around uh, reparations, around history, were never really uh, an integral part. So it might be, I don't know if my colleagues want to say anything about Cyprus, but I think it's a more relevant question to. Uh, the Bosnian context, really. Sanoa, oh. do you have an answer? Can you just shortly repeat the question? Because I missed the, the part of, of the discussion. So that in Rwandan uh, context, um, international instruments were clearly abandoned uh, because they were unworkable for more locally and culturally instigated solutions. Would they work in the Bosnian context? 
Uh, I think even I was very critical of the tribunal's work, as you might have seen from my presentation. I think its work was really indispensable because I cannot see that uh, we had at that point of time, but even today, the uh, national local capacities to prosecute at least those who are top, uh, uh, top uh, convicted. So even though I was very critical of its work, I think it was very, uh, very important. Uh, on the other hand, I also think that uh, the Vasilios had a good point in his presentation. I, I don't think that it was enough. Uh, it is in the post-conflict environment, it is not enough to address only uh, criminal uh, 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 justice. It is not uh, uh, on, enough only to look at the uh, rule of law and the establishment of the legal institution. It is equally important to deliver something that I would call distributive justice, to uh, work on the effective policies and politics of uh, distribution, and to tackle really structural uh, inequalities and injustices that lie at the heart of the conflict. But uh, <laughs> we live uh, in, uh, in a context in which uh, everything is more important politically. <laughs> so yeah, that would be my, my, uh, my answer to that question. We have, um, thank you so much. We have some questions which are specific to the second uh, um, uh, presentation into Cypriot context from Anne Fitzpatrick. Vasilius and other panelists, given the points Vasilius has made in the slides, how can social work as a discipline and profession claim to operate external to or parallel to any ongoing historical processes within our countries or, or operate apolitically as is sometimes claimed, including as many, um, as many social workers are employed by the state or state-funded uh, non-governmental organizations? How can we respond to this? It's not an easy question to tackle. It's, it's, it's not an easy, it's, it's a very important one. See, uh, mm. I think both in our presentation and in Sinella's presentation, um, there was a degree of criticism towards what we could call technocratic approaches to uh, conflict resolution, or uh, in, a, in a different, if, if I had to put it in different words, all these top-down toolkits, you know, toolkits uh, that are imported, they never take into consideration uh, local knowledge, or the, the, the specific context, and they're bound to, to either fail or oppress. So they're either irrelevant or when introduced, uh, they're very prob problematic. Um, but there is a long history of coexistence. Uh, I think we didn't have time to mention um, in this timeline that in the 40s, actually, uh, both communities where we jointly fought for better working conditions, anti-colonial, uh, anti-British uh, colonial um, um, agendas. The first general strike was bicommunal. So there's a strong political history of coexistence. So we need to reclaim this and, and also connect with the, with the grassroots and movement responses that they do exist. Apart from social workers, there's teachers creating similar initiatives. There, is, uh, there are other professionals. The victims' families among the pioneers in crossing uh, the line and, and, and meeting uh, the, vict the, the families of the missing persons. So we need to create spaces for the voices less heard to be listened to. And, and, and I don't want to monopolize, so I would invite uh, Gregory and, and Busset to say uh, anything. Mm. Yes, please. I think you were very clear. <laughs> <laughs> There is also a comment from uh, from the audience, very positive talk um, about the strength, and it uh, it can also be found in uh, reflection, which is very positive. What you do and what you're attempting to do in in in, in Cyprus. Um, a broader question, which might not necessarily be available to the panelists per se. Has social work contributed um, little to peace building generally, or has that been the case solely in Bosnian context? I don't know if we have example. I mean, one example which you have demonstrated certainly in relation to our profession within Cyprus, but uh, there are examples from elsewhere where social workers are more crucially involved in the peace building. 
regarding Cyprus, I would say that uh, what we are doing was the first initiative in the process of peace building. Uh, there was nothing else before um, regarding uh, the role of social workers in, uh, in both communities. So, um, yes, uh, I, I would consider um, the, 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 very, the first efforts um, in, uh, towards peace building and reconciliation in Cyprus um, started be, um, from Vasilis, who was the first uh, social worker, not a Cypriot social worker, but uh, during that time he was living in Cyprus and working in Cyprus. He was the one to um, try to bring us together. So we, we stepped aside our fears and ignorance and we, we, we established this network which became very strong network. And um, year by year, we see um, an interest coming from the younger generation of social workers who did not experience any trauma, any um, the effects of, of the war other than um, uh, misplaced. Um, but um, we hope that uh, older generations of social workers will, will, will follow. I think this is say yes. something for this, sorry. Um, as Gregory said, we didn't have that traumas directly, but we are the generation who um, has the trauma, who raised up by the generation who had that trauma. For example, my mom and dad was 15 when they have these traumas, the war and the um, migration actually. So whenever I check or I observe the students' attitudes or even myself actually, in the primary school I was uh, perceiving the Greek Cypriots or Greeks as enemies and people with blue colors actually, I don't know why. <laughs> But because of the history books, whatever we read, actually, we have an image. And unfortunately, without having a connection with these people or coming together or passing to the other side of the island, we cannot, since we are not seeing each other, we just have that image. So both individually and the community level, I think we have to do something in order to change the perception of these people. And whatever we did with this platform, as I mentioned with a sample from the students' um, speech, actually, uh, they are still asking me, Madam, are, why we are not doing anything else about communal work? We really like to be together with the Cypriots, with our colleagues. We started to change our um, perspectives before I afraid to go to Southside. And with this uh, organization, we started to uh, do something. So not only on the uh, student level, of course, we have to uh, carry this to the community level to change something and to take at least one step to build these pieces, I think. Thank you so much. I, I think there are those opportunities to come together, which sometimes do require and can be difficult to initiate from within, require some, somebody sometimes to connect us across the borders and create those safe port, points of encounter. Well, final question, because I'm aware that we are coming to the end of our time, which, which elapsed more quickly, not solely because we were slightly delayed at the beginning, um, is from uh, Somnoma. Um, do any of the panelists have knowledge of how political knowledge in social work is embedded within curricula? So do you kind of, within social work curricula, embed um, any kind of political uh, uh, role for social work? Just curious as to how some schools of social work are incorporating the topic of conflict in their curriculum. Um. Can I, Sonella, please, and then I can... Sure, it's, it's okay. You can. Then I will later. <laughs> yeah, very quickly. I, the, I think what kind of initiated um, the developments in Cyprus we mentioned, uh, apart from a, 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 a commitment and willingness, was exactly that, that the official curricula made no mention. You know, it's, it's, mm -hmm. Cyprus is one of the most 
militarized places on the planet. You know, if you're a visitor and you go out of the hotel, uh, let's say you have the touristic parts zones of the of the island, you cannot you you will notice the heavy militarization of the island. Nevertheless. In the social work curriculum, there was no mention until recently, until those initiatives. And again, very briefly, and, and, and so you, you will allow us a few minutes just because we start a bit later. The most powerful um, extracurricular activity I have personally witnessed with the students from the University of Nicosia and, and at Durham University was when we visited um, the um, missing persons identification space. I mentioned before, this is really tables after table, you know, next to each other, where there would be skeletons and, and fragments of, of bones and, and pathologists, anatomists try to identify missing, but there's more than 3000 missing, missing persons. And we're there with the Greek students, with the Greek Cypriot students, sorry. And, and, and one of the students, the, you know, you could see bullet holes on the bones. It was, it was horrific image children and one of the uh, students very vocally would say uh, out loud this is why i hate the turkish cypriots and the turks look what they did to these children and and the pathologist heard that and said when we finish can these greek cypriots please stay here for a second the students and they did and and he was he was very assertive he went to the to the student and said so um you, you're angry with what you just saw and the Greek Cypriot student said, yeah, I'm very angry. So you want to kick uh, the, the Turkish Cypriots out of this island? He said, yeah, you bet I want. So then you better, uh, it's, it's time for you to know that today we're identifying the bodies of Turkish Cypriots. So the victims, the, the, the crimes committed here were for, from your side of the island. And they started crying because not, nobody ever told them about their community committing atrocities. These stories need to, um, in, to be included and embedded in the curriculum. And some of the problems come from different curricula or different versions of history and geography uh, being taught to certain groups of people, which still happens in many places. I want to thank you all so much for uh, such an insightful presentations today. Um, I also want to um, apologize again for some technical difficulties um, we experienced. I propose we do wrap up because I do appreciate people might have other commitments. Um, many thanks for attending again. And the next one, hopefully without any technical delays or problems is taking place next Tuesday, 26th of April. The topic is listening to voices less heard in conflict context. And it, uh, focuses on gender, working with child soldiers and decolonizing post-war social work. In order to help us really capture your learning and your experience today, I've put in the chat a link to the survey. Thank you all so much once more. Thank, many, many thanks to our presenters from Cyprus and from Bosnia. Um, many thanks to my co-host uh, co today, Jim, and I hope to see all of you next week on Tuesday. Thank you. <laughs>